Alright, hello guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about my winter thoughts part 3. This is a series that I do that is kind of like the forecast, but I'm giving my reasons for my forecast. Today we're going to be going over my analog years. We're going to be looking at the sea surface temperatures compared to this year's sea surface temperatures and then showing you actually what the outcome would mean. And then I'm going to be comparing those to my forecast that I just released about a week ago. But before I get started with the video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content. I make all sorts of videos like this and also check out our social medias in the pinned comment and the bottom of the description. Let's get right into it though. We are looking at our current sea surface temperatures and I want you to pay attention to a few areas specifically. Now that first area being just south of Alaska and off the west coast of the United States. So right in that area where you can see a lot of those reds, that's actually going to be an area that we call the PDO. And this is a very big player in how the winter plays out. Also, the areas around Greenland, we like to see above average temperatures in this region. And we do see that actually on our current sea surface temperatures. So that's a really, really good sign. Now, also the ENSO plays in, into account a little bit. So we're looking at a neutral ENSO. So I'm looking for weaker signals, either a weak El Nino, neutral or weak La Nina within these couple of years that I've selected. Now, our first year here is 2014 to 2015. And here's your sea surface temperatures. You can see we do have those warmer temperatures south of Alaska and off the west coast of the United States. It's hugging the coast a little bit more. And that's a little bit more of like a stereotypical positive PDO. It looks really classic, whereas this year's kind of looks sloppy. Uh, but the ENSO does add up. It, it's pretty neutral right there closer to Ecuador and then once you get further into the ocean you can see it gets a little bit more above average which is kind of what we're looking at and the areas south of Greenland there is some colder areas and a little bit of warmer areas there but overall it kind of adds up this isn't one of the stronger years this isn't this doesn't look exactly like it but it is pretty close and it's probably a top five analog out of all years that we have data for now moving on though we are going to look at 2013 to 2014 and this is another year that's not too strong. Uh, just south of Alaska and California, we do have, again, that warmer area of temperatures. And that actually looks a lot more like this year than the last one. But the, the ENSO is looking a lot more negative in this one, a lot more like a La Nina than actually this year. But it, it is pretty close because it's weak. And then the areas off of Greenland is kind of the same story as 2014 to 2015, where there is that colder region and then warmer region, whereas this year we have all warm south of Alaska, which would create really nice blocking. Now, here's another year, 20, 2004 to 2005, and you can see the ENSO, this actually looks really good. That The ENSO is neutral near Ecuador and then actually warmer as you get further into the ocean, which is a lot like this year. And then that warm area south of Alaska and and to the west of California there looks a lot like this year. And then the areas south of Greenland are all above average. There is that a below average area just near the United States. And those areas are cooling right now, so I can't really rule this out. But this is a pretty good look. Uh, now we're looking at 2009 to 2010. And this one's not very close. You can see the El Nino was quite strong actually this year. And it was a Mo Motokai El Nino. But, and then the PDO... You can see there isn't really those warm temperatures there. But the areas off of Greenland look a lot like this year in this one. So the Atlantic does add up a lot from this analog year. So I wouldn't call this the strongest analog year. Probably 2004 to 2005 looks the most similar at this point. And then also here's the combination of them all. And you can see once you combine them all, it actually looks a lot like this year. And I'm going to show them side by side in just a second. But you can see the areas south of Alaska and the areas to the west of California looks very, very similar. And then the areas in the ENSO, there's kind of a neutral or La Nina look closer to Ecuador. And then out in the middle of the ocean, it's warmer a lot like this year. And then in the Atlantic, you can see slightly warmer than average temperatures there for the Atlantic off the coast of America. And then also for the areas surrounding Greenland, we have that Greenland blocking going on where there's above average temperatures all around there. Looks very, very similar. And here's them side by side. I know it's really zoomed out. I'll try to zoom it in as much as possible. But you can see that this is a very, very similar look, actually. So I really like the combination of all of these together. And it seems to be a pretty good match. You can look anywhere on this map, and it pretty much adds up. You can't really, you know, complain. This is about as close as it gets. So the combination of all of these looks to be the strongest uh, analog grouping that I can come up with as of right now. Now, as the sea surface temperatures change, we'll see if we have to add or take away some of these. But as of right now, I think this might be my final analog package just because it looks so similar on sea surface temperatures. Now, <clears throat> I didn't have this complete 
analog package when I made my winter forecast. That's the interesting part, but as you're gonna see later in this video, it actually matches up really, really nicely, which was surprising, and I really uh, like that, that it, that it matches up perfectly. So it's very confluent with what I'm calling for already. Here's the precipitation anomalies here. And you can see in the southwest, we have above average. I don't think I'm calling for that, but the precipitation gets a little crazy usually with analog, so it's not always going to add up perfectly. I'm just showing it. I think we will have a lot closer to average um, conditions there for the northwest rather than super dry like this is calling for. And then in the east, I, I can't really complain about this one. You see above average temperatures for the entire east coast. We'll see what happens, but... Uh, overall, I think this is going to affect temperatures a lot more of the analog package. Looking at temperatures, you can see it's pretty cold there for the eastern United States, especially the kind of central eastern United States. So Great Lakes, uh, central, nor the north central regions of the United States. So the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, all these areas are very cold. And then also like Texas, Louisiana, and into the southeast, all of these areas are pretty cold. And then you can see it's very warm for the, for the western United States. Or, or not very, but, you know, pretty warm. And all of these years together creates this. Now, here's my winter forecast, my temperature forecast for the winter. And you can see it looks almost identical. Very, very confluent. I really like how it matches up with my analogs at this point. And I think it's going to be a pretty, uh, you know, decent call for the winter. And I don't know how much my temperature forecast will really change considering my analog packages now add up with the winter forecast. So... We'll have to see. Now, here's your, my precipitation forecast. You can see I'm calling for below average precipitation, slightly below average precipitation for the entire West Coast, whereas my analogs were kind of calling for above average in the Southwest, really below average in the Northwest. So the West Coast did not add up with my analogs. But then the entire East, I guess in Texas and Oklahoma, it was calling for below average precipitation. I'm calling for slightly above, but for the very close to the East Coast, I think it's going to be pretty darn accurate. Now, anyway, guys, I hope you really, really enjoyed this video showing you guys my analog packages. Let me know if you want me to make more videos like this one where I kind of go over all of the things that go into the winter forecast. I know this won't get as many views as my winter forecast just because some people don't really care about the you know more scientific stuff like this. But I like to show it just because a lot of people are like, where did you get this information? Like, where are you coming up with this? I just didn't feel like showing it because I feel like it loses the interest of viewers sometimes. But I decided to show it in a separate video. So for those people, I can link them to this video. Uh, and, th and there's going to be many more Winter Thoughts videos to come. Probably every Jams Tech update. So all the model updates. And then also as my analogs change, I'll be continuing to show you guys more Winter Thoughts videos. And anything that I think about the winter, basically, or new thoughts that come to my head that I'm seeing, uh, that I'm thinking about, I will be showing. So I'll be doing like oscillation updates like... ENSO updates, PDO updates, NAO updates, things like that, just to show you guys how those things are progressing and what it really means for the winter time. Anyway, guys, I hope you really, really enjoy this video. Oh, and make sure to click the links in the description again in, in the pinned comment, our social medias. I know I mentioned this at like the end of every video now, but please join the groups in the Discord. It's so cool, and it really is nonprofit. I don't make any, any money from these things, and it's just really a, a way for me to get together with a lot of the the people who watch my videos and just discuss weather, which is really, really cool to me. Also the Instagram and the Facebook page you can follow and that'll give you more frequent updates for when I upload videos. Cause I know sometimes YouTube doesn't notify some of my subscribers. So you can follow those. And I always, always make a post about the things uh, or about the videos that I upload. So you'll always see that on the Facebook and the Instagram. Also some exclusive content. I plan on making some posts on those things like, like, videos that are sent in from storms. You can always send those in to my um, Facebook, anything. If you put it in the group, I might use it or uh, DM it to me on Instagram. I'll be sure to use some of those. I plan on making videos for winter storms, like viewer sent in videos, just like videos exclusively for that, which I think would be really, really cool. And even hurricanes, if we have some hurricanes come to the United States. So that's kind of my plans for this channel. Also, if you're from Canada or Europe, I just made Direct Weather Europe and Direct Weather Canada. Those will be in the description now from now on. So you can always click on those. I plan on doing many things with those, but this that's not really going to take away from this channel. I know that's probably a concern. And I almost think I plan on having somebody else run those channels eventually. But for now, I'm just going to kind of upload every once in a while on them and try to get them growing. And then I'm going to worry about getting somebody to run those channels for me just so I can 
focus on this channel, but I did want to bring videos to you guys from Canada and you guys from Europe. So if I do get somebody else to run those channels, I will make sure that they have very high quality content and that they will be bringing you guys videos that you would enjoy. Anyway, guys, I hope you really love this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.